The reason for the travel is to explore the planet, uncover diverse cultures of other people, but most important, discover ourselves. This is Around the Globe. Good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening. I want you to have a good whatever time of the day it is when you're watching this episode. Today we're still in Brazil, enjoying the weather obviously. In this episode I am entering the favela, which is in another terms a poor ghetto area. And favelas are considered to be extremely dangerous because of the criminality over there. And you should never go to favelas alone. If you're not a local guy, if you don't live there, never go to favelas alone. Only have a local guy who can take you in safely and take you out safely. Um, I'm waiting for my guy at the meeting point right now. And he's taking me in. And he has even arranged some interviews with some local guys. It's extremely interesting episode, I can't wait. And yeah, I'm a little scared obviously, but um, yeah, I think it's a good thing. So um, let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, Carlos. Let's have a great day, okay? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Suggestion. Okay, yeah. Mike. Win. We're supposed to go by taxi. We won't go by fucking taxi. Okay? Yeah. So we took a motorcycle ride from bottom of the favela to the top. <laughs> Honestly, I wasn't prepared for this. The guy was like smoking cigarette at the same time, driving extremely fast at the traffic. Uh, and we obviously did not even have the helmets on. So <laughs> I'm not saying I was scared, but I was feeling some excitement <laughs> to, be, to be honest. Uh, that was, uh, now I'm waiting my guy. Uh, he's coming with another motorbike, so I gotta wait him here until he gets here. So that was our experience for sure. And now we're right now in the middle of the favelas. Two for cinco. Aqui é five. É, dá dez, dá dez reais. No, it's okay. I'll take this one. Yeah. Leva mais um. Bota no braço dele. Aí não tem México, aí não tem nada. She's always complaining about life. Always, always. Fazer protesto nesse posto aí, cara. Porque não tá dando remédio, não tá dando nada pra ninguém. Assim? Pera aí. Assim ou assim? I'll take it for my girlfriend. Não, não, vai levar pra namorada. Ah, vai? Sim. Vai levar pra namorada. Uma pulseirinha levar pra namorada. Obrigada. Obrigada. Vai com Deus, tá? Valeu, tudo. Tchau. Tchau. The water station, there was no running water, no post office during the dictatorship. Yeah. So we have the water station now, African democracy. Okay. The water comes from the city to all the houses, we don't pay for water. We only pay for power. Okay? Power. But it's 30% lower fee. Okay. Second, normally they used to say that drug dealers control the favelas, you know? Yeah. That's what you heard. No, drug dealers don't control shit. Drug dealers sell drugs. Yeah. Like yeah. selling bananas, like a market. Yeah. They control drugs, they okay. sell drugs, okay. they don't administrate, they're not public people. Yes. That's our parliament, okay? Yeah. Every right four there? years, that's the parliament. Okay. Yeah. Every four years, all the Favelas are real vote for a mayor, someone for the community, they understand the community politically and socially. And this person becomes a member of the outside parliament as a community political representative. Okay. He's the one to keep in touch with the government for all kind of need we have. This is a clinic. There are three hospitals in here, okay? okay? Now I want to show you one thing. Come with me. The first favelas were born after Canudo's war in the 19th century. The soldiers, the former slaves, 
were promised homes and freedom for fighting in the war. Yet after the war, the government didn't want the former slaves to live among the normal people, so they were pushed to live on the hills among the favela trees, to live in the small shacks and poor environment, and then live in the houses built by the materials that they just could get their hands on. Wow! I came here yesterday to ask about you playing your drone. But this have no. We play in that roof. Okay. Remember? So Timo, we're gonna walk from here to the bottom. Okay, so it'll be a long walk. We're gonna walk on the main road. Remember the main road? Yeah. We also gonna walk inside. Normally we receive this is the only touristic favela. Normally the tour guides, 90% of the tourists make the tour inside the car. They come to the roof, back to the car and drive through like in a safari. Yeah. I know we're gonna be with people, so we're gonna make it 100%. Yeah. You know, even the ones that walk, they walk to the main road. They never venture inside the alleys. Okay. You know, they don't bring the tourists inside the alleys. Okay. But this is it. That's what I like the most. We're gonna walk on the road. We're gonna walk inside the alleys. Okay. okay? Gotcha. Because favelas, there are different social classes also. Okay. Yeah. And I want to show you how, where the more poor people live, where the more rich people live, why some places are more expensive than others. You know. Okay. So we're gonna walk inside, outside, inside, outside. 100% favela tour. Okay. Okay. That's some Corrado neighborhood. One of the most expensive neighborhood in Brazil. Yeah. You know, after Leblon, Ipanema, Copacabana on that side. On the other side of the hill is the west side. West side. All those blue stuffs in the top of the houses, the water tanks. The water comes from the station, up to the white tank behind the trees, you see. From the white tanks, up to the top of the houses, down to the house. As I told you, we don't pay for water. Okay. Um, show you one thing. I made a documentary for Holland about COVID-19 in favela. I made it exactly here. Yeah. Okay. And uh, in the special, there was a special documentary, especially about COVID-19. I told them at the beginning, at the beginning, people had no idea about masks and alcohol. Alcohol, you yeah. know. People had no idea what kind of disease that was. Okay. So most of the people that want to work, they brought the disease inside. Yeah. But only 29 people died in my community. COVID-19 here was not a big deal. And you know why? You're gonna see Leblon, Ipanema, Copacabana, Niterói, downtown, Laranjeiras, where you are, is behind there, okay? All the city is connected, easy to spread the disease around. Yes. My neighborhood is in a valley. Yeah. We are not connected to the city. Yeah. Okay? At the beginning, we have people sick of COVID-19 because most of the people that went to work they, did, they had no idea how to take protection. Nobody knew it. Yeah. Until we decided for the mask and the alcohol, alcohol gel, okay? After people understood that they have to take protection, we stopped bringing the disease inside. Yeah. Because the disease that was here did not spread around. Right. We did not receive from the city, we did not distribute. Yeah. Because we are in a valley. So these mount, those mountains protected us from the virus somehow. Yeah. Okay? Understand? Yes. Normally, they pick up the garbage in Rio once a day, 9 a.m. But in my favela, three times a day, 9 a.m., 5 p.m., 9 p.m. Why three times a day? Because it's 160,000 people in four and a half square kilometers. Yes. It's a huge production of garbage. Besides, more than 30,000 business in here. That's why they pick up the garbage three times a day. But let me tell you one thing, maybe you don't know. Brazil is the third country in recycling garbage in the whole world. Yes, that I heard it. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, what I heard. Yeah. First one is Switzerland, second one is Germany, third is Brazil. Okay. But listen, in Europe, recycling garbage at home is a tradition. In Brazil, it's not a tradition. It's survival. We put it. It's a survival. Yes. Game. We bring it all together to the garbage. Okay. The people that recycle, the people that recycle to make their living. Twenty-seven meters of people live off the garbage in Brazil. Of course, it's a good contribution to the economy and also to the nature, okay? Yeah. The nature says thanks, but it also proves that are millions of people depend on the garbage for a living in Brazil, which is economy number nine in the world. We are very rich. Yeah. It's a local market, okay, Timo? Yeah. Uh, uh, most of the things here come from Sao Paulo in Paraguay. Okay. Okay. 
It's, uh, before it used to be a mass, but the government organized the area. This is Rambo. Oh, Rambo. Rambo. Welcome to Rocinha, my name is Rambo. Thank you. Let me show what Rambo Rambo. does in here. It's a big snake. I'm not one of yeah. Three meters. He took it in the forest. <laughs> yeah. Rambo. <laughs> it's El Chimo, Rambo. El Chimo. Chimo. Finland, yeah. My name is Chimo. Chimo. Yes. O Rambo trabalha para o bombeiro, né? He works for the fire department. Yeah. Okay. Well, he voluntary. captured. He's volunteer. He captured. So, let me tell you. So I made my house out of the rubbish. Yeah. And I made a beautiful house. I want to be an architect. Come on. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I made a beautiful house. I found out that the, the rubbish is rich. Yeah. All kind of materials. Even my machines, my devices came for the garbage. I yeah. live like a king. Yeah. In the middle of the forest, surrounded by trees, close to the waterfall, and all the things that I have is reused. Yeah. I'm going to put it to the planet. Yeah. Okay? But I but I found out that we don't need much to live. When you said that you sold everything to travel the world, yeah. man, you are my man because we really don't need much yeah. to survive, yes. to be rich, you know, to be rich is in here. Yes, definitely. you know. Excuse me, sorry. Hello, Garua. Hello. Okay. Let me make a question. We are inside now, okay? Yeah. We're gonna walk inside, back to the main road, inside again. 160,000 people, four and a half square kilometers. This place is very busy, isn't it? Yeah. Why the place is so silent? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, where are all the people? Like, sleeping cities, dormitory town. In the city, working. Yeah, okay. In the night, everybody come okay, back. Okay, so you don't belong night, there. Gonna be super exactly. Crowded. That okay. all the favelas at this moment used to be very quiet. Okay. Not on the main roads. It's a commercial area. Yes. Okay. As for the blows that you heard, yeah, that's fireworks. Yeah. In favela, fireworks is all the time. People in the outside, they always think that it's have to do with dealers. It's shooting. Shooting don't have echo. Yeah. Shooting is. Okay. This is Sergio. Sergio, you can film him. Sergio makes his living carrying construction material to the people. Okay. You wanna ask him something? Do you enjoy your work? Sim! 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 Isso faço isso com maior orgulho. He's very proud of his job. That's his that's how he makes his living, carrying material. He did not find a job. Does he make enough money to survive? Dá para fazer o suficiente? Sim, muito yeah, bem. Yeah, muito much bem. better. Okay. And much better. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Obrigado, Sergei. Valeu, valeu. So many people make a big confusion because I told you, it's easy to blame the poor people. Yes. The fireworks you heard, they're here in the city also. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But to the people in the city, they think it have to do with drugs, have to do with shootings. Yeah. There's no shooting. Shootings yeah. don't have echo. Okay. And by the way, you can stay in this favela. There are something like five years now that I don't listen to one single shot. Okay. One single shot. Okay. Even if the guys sport weapons in favela, the dealers, yeah. first of all, they represent less than 1% of the community. Yeah. Second, they live in here, they respect everybody. Yeah. Third, they use the weapons to impress the ladies. Yes. But they don't keep on shooting. Yeah. Shooting who? Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. So that's fireworks. Never forget, okay. fireworks have echo. Okay. So shooting have no echo. Okay. Stop. Well, what would you say uh, if some <laughs> some tourist wants to go to favelas without a guide? Is it safe for just a regular? That's what happens the most. That's what happened the most. You know, Brazilians never come. We will without a guide. But many tourists. By the way, let me answer a question in a better way. There are hostels in favelas. Yeah. Okay. Sergio, um abraço, compadre. Pergunta pra ele se ele quer filmar dali pra cá ou fazendo pra casa. Yeah. Pergunta a ele. Vai trazer agora? Aham, uh -huh. vamos levar ele lá. You wanna, you wanna film him carrying the material? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. A gente quer sim. Uh, uh, in favela we have hostels. Yeah. In here there are 12 hostels. Yeah. Especially for backpackers. Okay. okay. Fala pra ele. So they Fala come alone, ele. they come to stay, no okay. matter what. Fala pra ele que tu é o melhor guia. Fala pra ele. He said I'm the best guy here. Oh, fuck. Are you ready? Yeah. 
Serginho fala assim: Hello, Finland! Hello, Finland! Vamos! Vamos, meu guia, preferido! Ok. Serginho, tu atrás de tu? Normally, guys like him, on the, on the main road, in the entrance of the favela, you're gonna see a lot of young guys like him. Yeah. Those guys, most of the time, they are unliterate. They, they have not a good education. They cannot exactly get a job, especially in the modern society. But they make their money by carrying materials to the people, you know? See those trucks? Some of them with uh, construction materials, some of them with uh, products for the market. There are many markets inside also. Those are the guys that carry those weight yeah. to the people, to the local yeah. ones. And they make some money, you know? Yeah. It's just a job. Okay. Vai! Vou terminar aqui. Vou lá tem que ensinar que eu faço as coisas lá. Eu te mostro. Eu faço mais coisas lá. Fica aqui, Sérgio. Muito obrigado. Você divulga lá. Divulga lá, meu parceiro. Thank you. Show his work in Finland. Thank you. Um abraço para você. Cuba, pergunta o nome dele. O nome dele. Timo. Timo! Yeah. Vai com Deus. Ok, God, God bless you. Sérgio, um abraço, papá. Tá, depois se vê aí. Valeu, tamo ali. Vai com Deus. Simão, vai com Deus. Obrigado. Valeu, Sérgio. Valeu. Valeu. People are very nice, you know. You have no idea. Ah, ok. Good news for you. I have to say that it was a pretty big bag for the small guy. <laughs> he's, he's a lifter, yeah. There are many situations, okay? Yeah. Could be a birthday, they could be opening a new market, is a celebration, anniversary, or uh, someone that died. Yeah. You know, someone has been born. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah. in all kind of situations. So they celebrated if I were all, celebrating all time, yeah. okay. football. You know? When the police come into the favela, yeah, there are some watch people on some roofs. You know, yeah. when the police is coming, they blow the fireworks. They blow the firework because the whole favela knows that the police is coming. Okay? Okay? Why it's important for us? Because because it's important for us because normally as Brazil is a very corrupt country, the police and the dealers are friends. Yeah. So we know when the police is coming. Because the police tell the dealers they are gonna come because they paid for. Yeah. You know? And the dealers tell the community. Okay. Okay. When the police arrive, they blow the fireworks. Everybody hide and the community go home. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We don't stay out. Yeah. When the police is coming. Why not? Because we run a big risk of being arrested. Yeah. Think about a guy like Sergio, the one carrying the bag. Yeah. He's got no dog man, he's no t shirt, yeah. walking around. The police can take him as a scapegoat to jail. Yeah. But never the dealers, because the dealers pay yeah, them. Yeah. You know, okay. so they let us know they better take care of the police is in here. So it's very funny, Chimo, that we have to take care when the police is in here. Yeah, you have to. Not when yeah. the dealers are. Yeah. So in Brazil, in Brazil is a complicated country, isn't it? So in short terms, uh, you keep your dealers more friends as, than the cops, you know. They You're are, afraid of the cops, not the dealers. Yeah, they are because uh, normally they are because as the city thinks it's a place of bad people, the police can do whatever they want in here. Yeah. Nobody gives a shit in the city. Yeah. Because the idea is that it's a place controlled by dealers, yeah. they kill people, they rape girls, you know. That's the idea people have about the favela. So when the police come in here and kill innocent people, I'm gonna show the name of how many young people died last year. 38 young boys here, 16 years old, yeah. that died. Not Think about the one being arrested. Yeah. I'm gonna show all those names. Yeah, okay. Prepare yourself, okay? okay. So, <clears throat> this is my country. This is my country. As the, everybody in the city thinks favelas like this, Brazilians don't come. Yeah. If I brought 65 Brazilians in here in 26 years, I don't blame the Brazilians. I don't say they are intolerant, you know? Yeah. But they have an idea about favela 
that the media gives. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, because that that, that was those uh, that was the idea that I had from favelas, from stereotypes. Because I was asking people. But you the came. Streets, but you came. Yeah, before I came here, I was asking from Brazilians on the streets in Rio uh, about favelas. Have you ever been there? Is it safe? They all said no. It's not safe. Don't go there. They will kill you. That's what they were saying. They were just like, oh, don't go. If you uh, respect your life, you you will die yeah. if you go there. It's so funny that the same people that talk say this. The employees are from here. Yeah. And none of the employees died. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, but none they, of the employees yeah. died. Yeah. But if they say if you go, they kill you. Yeah. It's funny. You know. For what? I mean, you know. For what reason? Yeah. Yes. Stupid. That's what I was thinking. Thank so. you, Timo. So all these names that has been written on the wall here, most of them are a name of young people killed, written by the mothers. Okay. We'll show, I'm gonna show you more. Uh, uh, some of them is graffiti, you know, but I can show the name because I know all of them. Kawan, Borsha, Koki, you know. Uh, Let me see, man. Pablo, no. The one that died recently, I can show. Uh, we're right here. Okay. Peace for the favela. We rode on the mountain. Peace for the favela one time. They go for it. Fazendo o maior cinema interativo. A céu aberto da América Latina. Now he's making the biggest uh, open air cinema interactive uh, show in Latin America, the biggest one in Latin America. Yeah, in Favela. Lá naquela pedra. And it's gonna be, and uh, there's gonna be like a screen, a pro, they're gonna project the image on, 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 the, the, on the rock. Really? Uh, really. A pedra tem 120 wow. metros. The screen have 120 meters. <laughs> so that's gonna be one big movie screen. Okay, that's that's amazing. That that's one yeah, big theater. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 so is this going to happen? Vai começar quando? Hoje é o teste. Today is the test. Hoje é o teste. Really? Você pode ver hoje. I, I was going to ask like if he enjoys his work, but I mean, he just I, mean, I don't even understand what he's saying, but I obviously can tell that he loves what he's doing. He looks to be really alive. Yeah, yeah. Esse, esse esse projeto, eu penso ele já seis anos e eu não entendia como eu não conseguia realizar é, porque eu real, costumo realizar todos os projetos que eu penso e ele eu, eu, eu demorei a realizar e aí eu descobri que esse projeto não era meu esse projeto era do universo porque ele tinha que acontecer dentro da pandemia yeah. He understood that this is not a project of himself it's a project of the universe inside the favela okay. That's philosophy, isn't it? Yes. In the middle of the pandemic situation, in the middle of COVID-19, you know, yeah. six years thinking about this, and exactly in the middle of COVID-19, yeah. six months, six years after, you know, more than 6,000 people is going to watch the show, yeah. more than 100,000 people is going to watch the show, yeah. people in the community, and he made it happen exactly now, because he found out in the end, that is not exactly his project, it's a project of the universe, yes. a project of the Fafel itself. Okay, I uh, just can you tell him I wish him luck with the uh, work and uh, I'm really looking forward to what's his show. Okay. Ele deseja muita sorte e vai fazer o possível para vir no sábado no show. His name is Soka. Soka. Okay. So okay. Yes. Remember the parliament? Yes. Soka was one of our presidents. Really? Yeah. Okay, so he's really famous in this neighborhood, obviously. Hey, everybody knows this guy. A community leader. He's also a community leader. Okay. 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 Soka. Black Sabado Cura. The arch is the key. Yes. You know? Great. Soka, You said you can come on Saturday, okay? Yes. This is one of the banks. Get a four. Hey, let's rob the banks, Timo. <laughs> Nobody gives us shit. Nobody gives a shit to Favela, but if someone robbed the bank, yeah. the system gives a shit. Okay. A lot of people living in the favelas can't get jobs anywhere. 
so they sell peanuts, candies and gums, etc. Things like this on the streets in Rio in order to make 2 to 10 reals a day, which is approximately 1 to 2 euros a day. This is the money and the value that they have to live daily life with. This is one of the reasons why some of the people go to do the drug business in favelas, because they have no other option to support and provide for their families. Jimo, now we stop. Stop. Okay. You don't have to put it away. Just... Okay, we have to put the camera down now, so no filming. So we're ending our favela tour. Um, my guy here took me to, um, how can I say this? Social experience. He wants me to have full social experience of favela, so we're ending our tour with a guy, uh, with an interview with a guy who's been including in the drug deals. So his job here is kind of off the dark side of the favela. And so we were, we're here to ask some questions about how his life. So um, can you ask him first, um, what was the main reason for him for starting this kind of a lucrative job? He said, por que motivo ele começou a trabalhar nesse negócio? O que é que te levou a... Uh... Amizade, amizade. Friendship. Pessoas, o problema é isso, o problema de grana. É, que desde de criança já vinham nessa vida e eu precisei de dinheiro e... O senso de aqui, ele está vivendo uma vida de life e ele precisa de dinheiro, sua família também. So because of friends, uh, he was influenced to get into the market, into the business. Was the only opportunity he had at the moment was to sell drugs to survive. Okay, so survival was the main reason yeah. to, so, um, um, to provide his family yeah. money. So the reason principal is survival. Is he making enough money? That, uh, is he succeeding in his goal? Is he yeah. making enough money to provide for his family? Deu para ganhar dinheiro nesse tempo todo? Ou ganhou e gastou? Deu para ajudar a família? É, deu para ajudar algumas pessoas da família. E, quer dizer, você não fica rico, não tem como ficar rico. Yeah. Just a few guys can make it, you know. Most of the guys like him, as you can see the house, uh, he helped his family while was that was possible, you know. But uh, in the end, uh, they made money. They spent the money on drugs, and girls, and parties, you know. So they end up with nothing. So most of the drug dealers won't make enough yeah. living. They're just wasting the money. Exactly. So. Um, does he feel like it's a big risk? Does he feel safety or uh, is it dangerous for him to do this kind of job? A pergunta que ele está fazendo é fácil, né? Que é se é um trabalho que você se sentia seguro, mas não é muito arriscado, muito arriscado, muito arriscado porque hoje você acorda, você quando for dormir, você não sabe nem se vai dormir. He said it's a it's a risky job because they make money, but they go sleep, they don't know if they're gonna wake up, they don't know if they're gonna end up the day back home, they never know if they're gonna survive the next you day. You can't call on the next day, you can't call on the next day. By the next day you don't know what's gonna happen, okay. you go to jail, you're gonna so, die. Okay, so there's no future, it's only... Okay. No, no future, no, 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 no. Has he lost many friends in this kind of line of job? Yeah. Fez muitos amigos no mundo do... Alguns. He made a lot of friends, but most of them died already. And uh, even among themselves, there's no friendship at all. You know, it's a friendship, but they have to keep yeah. keep an eye. You know, even in the middle, guys, no, 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 they keep, you know, so there's no friendship at all. You know? Okay, it's like a colleague, they're colleagues, yeah, they're yeah. friends. So much colleagues with you, I mean. Yeah, yeah. So there's not that um, kind of, um, how do you say, um, loyalty 
How about the loyalty? Yeah. Can I ask about the loyalty about this kind of a line? Like, yeah. uh, when. I know, I know. Yes. Yeah. Oh, é, é, é uma vida boa. Boa. Mm. Mas. Ela é, é ilusória, né? É. é yeah. Ilusão. Yeah. It's ilusão. It's a good life. It's a. No light, nothing. Você It's tem a... dinheiro. Yeah. Tem vez que você está com dinheiro, você tem um. Big illusion. Tá. It's a good life. Some days you have money, it's a ilusão. You have gold. Then you can lose it all for the cops, then you can lose it all because you use on drugs. And they have to be loyal to each other, but there's no loyalty at all. Okay. You know, okay, they only have to be loyal for themselves to the ha to the boss. To the boss, okay. To the, okay. To the big man. Okay. You know? Okay. So is he more afraid of the cops than than the dealers, other dealers, or uh, yeah. bosses, or who is he most afraid of? You kick it down, my A polícia or his amigos? Como se está nessa vida? More about the friends. Okay, you know? okay. So the colleagues, yeah. he's more afraid of okay. Wow, well, yeah. that's that's um, okay. Can you can I ask um what is the main drug here that they're dealing with? Is it the Qual é a droga que mais se vende e no momento? Cocaine. Cocaine. Okay. okay. Is there a lot of different drugs, like a heavier drugs, like a heroin and stuff like this? Chip de droga que tem é cocaína. Cocaína, tem maconha, marijuana, tem skank, skank, a bolo. In here, there are only those drugs. Aqui não vem de crack. In Brazil, there is no crack. In Rio, there is no crack. Just a few places sell crack. Crack is more in São Paulo. Crack é mais em São Paulo. Em alguns lugares do Rio tem, mas aqui não. Só na sul do Rio. We don't produce uh, coke in Brazil. Okay, yeah. No? Only weed in an office. Okay. Here in Brazil, só tem mesmo maconha. Rather than that. Can you ask him, um, does he have to carry a weapon all the time with him? Or does he have a weapon? Yeah. He generally tem que andar armado, né? Mas a arma é do tráfico, né? Se você tiver um bom tempo, um bom tempo mesmo, se for uma pessoa de confiança, você pode comprar com o seu dinheiro a sua. Não tem o seu... Você não pode levar armas. Só quando você trabalha. As armas são para o sistema, para o box. Mas se eles têm um bom tempo trabalhando com eles, e eles te confiam, você pode ter um em você. Mas você tem que pagar para eles. Eles não te dão. Você pode botar até seu nome nela. Has he ever had to use a weapon in his job? Já usou arma alguma vez? Tem que usar, né? Se não usar, já tirou alguma vez? É a nossa proteção. Já tirou alguma vez? Não tira. I'm not asking. Ah, wait. I'm not asking if he have killed anyone. I'm asking like. Não se ele se atirou. Like se ele se pôde levar. Atirou alguém, mas se já teve que usar arma. Já, já. Right, right. Never, never killed anybody, but yeah. here sometimes they use, you know, scary weapons. Yeah, yeah. No, because of cops or or other dealers that come to take over. Okay, okay. So when they give in come out more, yeah. When other dealers come to, when the police is here, they don't shoot the cops. They are not crazy. Okay. When dealers come to take over the markets, you know, from other for So they have to be prepared. So they have to be prepared. Okay, so they don't shoot cops. They shoot only the other dealers coming from the other side. Yeah, the enemies. The enemies. The enemies. Okay. Okay. Is he trying to get away from this line of the job, or like is he? Does he have like a hope for the future? Like he might want to come something else, or does he think that this will be his last job? Okay. Yes, yes. He is trying to see if you have a dream of going to the same place, but then to go back to the future, to go back as if it was your last job. Trabalho aqui e não voltar mais para coisas. Tem esse tipo de sonho? Yes, yes. They dream about stopping, you know? All of them dream about stopping, you know? So they're more like victims here. Yeah, yeah. Mas a, a vida aqui, né? Yeah. yeah. They, just like most of them, they, they dream of stopping, of a better future. But also they are involved with it, you know? Yeah. And the money comes so easily, you know? It's quite impossible. Okay, Sometimes yeah. they die even before. You know, okay. uh, and uh, sometimes that's how they make their living for years and years, you know. But all of them have a uh, dream about stopping one day and have a bad future. Okay. Okay. I want, uh, can you thank, uh, thank him for me?
for yeah. this interview. And we can actually listen to the interviews for them. Yeah. I'm really grateful for all this. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they can do whatever they want. Nobody gives a shit in the city. This is the box, as I told you, for yeah. the ones living in this area. Yeah. So everybody living in this area, as this side there's no address, they check it here. Okay? They check it here. Let's keep moving on. Chivo, you're lucky, huh? <laughs> Sounds like it. What are you traveling the world, man? You know, thank you for understanding this side of my society. Yeah. It's not exactly Brazil. They show in the outside. Yeah. This is fucking hell. Yeah. Without them, we are self-sufficient. Yes. We are very close community. We are friendly. We help each other. You know? But the state, the system is our problem. Yeah. You know? The system to give us any right, you know? Yeah. We have the third worst quality of education in the world. Okay. Believe me or not, almost 70% of Brazilians are illiterate. Okay. Welcome to Africa. But it's a kind of number nine. Yeah. Much more, much better than Africa. Yeah. You know? So we are afraid of the system. They give us nothing, they give us the system, but they give us food. Yeah. That's why people vote on them. Yeah. You know? Makes sense. You know? If you want to control people, feed them up. People seem to be very afraid of the police and the favelas because they don't want to get in the crossfire of shooting between the police and the drug dealers. I'm gonna show the place where they shot the movie Fast and Furious 5. Oh, yeah. They I shot the that. movie, it was not the cops. No. <laughs> Vin Diesel, they shot yeah, the yeah. movie here, you know? Yeah. Fast and Furious 5. Not literally. They are on the other side, the cops. Everybody tells, as we all, everybody tells where they are. Yeah. You know? They okay. are in Rua Dois, street number two is there. That's why I change direction, no? Okay. Because the community helped me to avoid okay. the cops. That's why they shot back to Curious Wife. In this area here. Mm -hmm. Vin Diesel was here. <coughs> Many people think Michael Jackson came to my favela. No, Michael Jackson went to Dona Marta, not my favela. Okay. Here, we shot movies like The Incredible Hulk, number two, oh, and yeah, also cool. A Fast and Furious 5, all in this area. Man, these are pretty small steps. Yeah. You have to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Macaho! Mr. Macaho, spaghetti. Yo, yo, yeah, I are. could see that. There was also a successful business person here that I want you to interview. Uh, Flamengo is playing. <laughs> well, you, well, you, well, you. People are so afraid of the cops. Look at the business closed. Yeah. Most of them. So, can you explain one more time? What, what are they afraid of that the police will do to them? Why are they so afraid of cops? <sighs> because the cops are not friendly. Yeah. You know? We are the one blamed. You know, we are the one blaming in the city. Yeah. We are the one blamed for being responsible Fuck. responsible yeah. for drugs, responsible for criminality, you know? Yeah. So and as they and as they as the idea of Brazil is that in the favela we're gonna die, we're gonna be killed, it's a place of drugs, please don't go, you know? Yeah. As the idea of the favela, the city is this, I don't blame Brazil not that Brazilians don't come in here, okay? Because it's the system, you know? As nobody gives a shit about my place, even yeah. if I get killed by the cops, I can speak five language, I'm a writer, yeah. you know? 
I'm someone, I'm yeah. intelligent. Even if I be killed by the cops, okay. you know, they're gonna put drugs on my pocket and say that I was a dealer. Oh. And even in my family protest, poor people don't have lawyers. Yeah. So nothing happened. They only say in the television, we're gonna check it out if he was innocent or not. But I am innocent. Yeah. Okay. When a dealer is when a dealer dies, you know, that's why his choice. We don't protest. Yeah. When an innocent die, we go to the city to protest. Yeah. Okay. And the media say the police said he was a drug dealer, but the family said he was not. We gonna investigate. Yes, yeah. But the but the media don't investigate yeah. anything, you know? Yeah. Just like this. So most of the people close the doors because they wanna they don't wanna run risks. Yeah. You know, they don't want to run risks, you yeah. know. But after the police leaves the favela, everything is going to open back to normal, safe place. It's always been a safe place, yeah. you know. But in this kind of situation, we have to know where the firework is, then you never go there. Okay. You know, because not because they're shooting the dealers. Yeah. We heard no crossfire. Yeah. We heard only fireworks. Yeah. If they were shooting the, the cops and the cops shooting the dealers, there would be a war. Okay, yeah, right, right. Completely yeah. different kind yeah. of shooting, you know? They just let them, they know they are close to here, everybody leaves. Okay. They are close to here, everybody leaves. Allegro Chain, you know? Yeah. But until now, there was no crossfire. Okay. Because the dealers paid them yeah. to be told okay. when they would arrive, okay. arrive here. Yeah, yeah. And the dealers hide. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense? Yeah. Finland, in Brazil, the banana eats the monkey. <laughs> Seita, Seita, you want some water? Yeah, sure. So they work with me. Uh, Alberto is also a tour guide here. Okay. So the money you gave, I'm giving him. He gonna put in the bank for my boss because yeah. he doesn't work today. And I oh, have time. Okay. Alberto. Okay, hello. Want some water? Yeah, but I'm very sensitive. Is it good water? Because yeah. I will get... It's a good water. Okay, it's okay, a good yes. water. It's a good water. And for Finland, I mean, yeah. I'm going to use yeah, the bacteria here, so... Yeah, yeah. The oh, shit, this is what it has. This is Alberto. What's up? Obrigado. In your laje, very nice. Very nice. Mina da Casta I love you. I have, I have friends yeah. in Finland. Caipirinha is a special drink in Brazil, like um, uh, like uh, uh, margarita in Mexico, you know? Okay. Like margarita, like tequila. Caipirinha is our drink, special okay. drink. If you want to try, yeah, sure. give it like 50 minutes, 20 minutes to relax. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, yeah nice because ball. it's kind of hot here but yeah, for yeah. me. Gringo. Gringo. This is the only one that call me language. <laughs> the language. Yeah. Oh yeah. The people who work with the drug business live extremely dangerous lives, not only because of the police and the special forces, but also against the other drug gangs. Brazil behind the World Cup and Olympic Games. Come see with me. It's a joke. Economy number nine. Yeah. It's Brazil. Yeah. Not exactly the place you're gonna see, but I'm a joke. Hey, galera, it's a friend of mine. Yeah. Okay, she lives in this very simple house. Yay, cara. Beleza, contigo? Esse é o Timo da Finlandia. Okay? You wanna question, ask something? Okay, so this is her house, yes? Yeah, essa é sua casa, né? Yes. Okay, can I film her house? Is it okay? Pode fazer um filme. 
Ok. okay. Obrigado. Qual foi, cara? Qual foi, cara? He's one of the families that we used to help. I have a friend from America. Estou contando uma história aqui. Vai que vai uma Uh, I have a friend from America. In this area, there are six families here that he helps, you know? Yeah. As you can see, the house is very simple. So every month he sends me money to buy food for six families. I'm very proud because I never thought that I would make this to my community, you know? I mean, that of sounds course, amazing, it's yeah. It's his money, but I am the one to buy and give the people, yeah. you know? This is her house. Yeah. The kids are still sleeping. Uh, uh, <laughs> Valeu. Mori, vem cá me dar um abraço. Tá bem? Falou. Tá bom? Qual o seu nome? Damiana. 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 Isso. Ok? Dá um abraço aí no time, Davi. <risos> valeu, moleque. Valeu, valeu. 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 Dami. Obrigada. Valeu. Dami. Porra, Dami, tô de olho naquela parada, cara. Quando esse camarada valeu. me surge. Ok. Aí eu vim aqui falar com o time. Valeu. Valeu. Valeu, moleque. Fala assim, hello. Hello. Yeah. yeah. <risos> Tá grande, cara. Tá, tá, tá grandão aqui, né? ele, é, pô. Valeu. Vai, vai. Tchau, Dami. Tchau. Muffin in house. É. Yeah. You know? Say I sold my house, my car, my things to travel the world. Yeah. Now we have nothing, but you can travel the world. Yeah. They can't sell the house. Yeah. That's all they have. Yeah. They also have nothing. All right. Just like you. Yeah. Human beings, you know, in a different situation. Yes. You as a as a Finnish. Yeah. Her. As a Brazilian. Yeah. Obviously, I have a lot, a lot better thing. I mean, I can buy all this food. I have much better. Like, you see the difference? Shelters. Not yes. even you, not even yeah. her, have a house to sell. Right. Right. No matter if she have got a house. Yeah. Not you, not her, yeah. have a house to sell. Yeah. Because she not even have the furniture yet. Yeah. <laughs> It was pretty, I, I, I have to say, it was pretty hot in there. I, I kind of felt like, holy well, did I actually live here? Because no air conditioning, I mean, I'm sweating yeah. here. It's, whew. Yeah. Are you okay? This is exactly, exactly like, what I'm waiting for. Well, I didn't ex, ex well, well, how can I say this? I'm, I didn't know what to expect for, but yeah. this is, I'm extremely happy to witness all this. Um, it's a shock. I, I yeah. have to say it's a shock. I mean, I don't know Thank how you. well all this goes to the camera. I mean, if they get the same vibe, but me witnessing <clears throat> all this going inside, yeah. uh, seeing the people, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. uh, it's a shock. It's a shock, really. Yeah. Economy number nine. Don't forget it. Yeah. Because if you walk, we on the bottom. If you walk 300 meters away from here, 25 meters, one apartment. What a social gap. Yeah. Right. I'm not blaming the rich. I'm not blaming. Yeah. The it's my society, and I love my country. Yeah. You know. You know. So when I said, after being a favela, you can tell your friends in Finland when you go back in Finland that you have been in Brazil definitely 100%. Yeah. And I'm very proud to be part of your project. Yeah, thank okay. you for that. I'm the one that showed this yeah. our society. Uh, or did I maybe, with excellence, of course, maybe would be very hard for you to find a local tour guide. You no, want to find yeah. a tour guide that bring you here, tell I, a lot of bullshit. I tried to, I tried you know? to, it wasn't happening. Okay. I tried everywhere, I was asking yeah. people, and then I, ha I happened to turn this website where I so yeah. sent you a message, and I mean, I'm yeah. so happy that this all turned out. Yeah. So thank you, Tina. Thank you. Let's get drunk, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get drunk. It's a hard night. Oi, oi. Uh. So at this time, I'm supposed to say bom dia, right? Bom dia. Exactly. Bom tarde is in the morning. Bom dia is in the morning. After midday, uh, now it's boa tarde. No, now it's boa tarde. But in Brazil, we say bom dia until. 5 p.m. 
A we only see Boatard good afternoon after five. Okay, so because, I say bon dia now. Yeah, I... because okay. it, because you know it's so clear that it, it's good morning. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Okay, <laughs> you know? makes sense. You know? yeah, here it's always a good morning. Good morning. Morning doesn't. Only it's... after five when it's getting dark. Okay, we say good afternoon. afternoon. Okay, guys. At seven when it's completely dark. Good night. Okay. In Portuguese, there's no oh, okay, tell me doggo. Ooh, In Portuguese, there was no. Oh, you know why so many cats? Yeah, this is a dog one. Look. You know why so many. Oh, that's a dog. Mm -hmm. but there are so many cats in here on the way. You're gonna see. Maybe do not pay attention because of rats. Oh, yeah, yeah. So oh, look, there's, a, there's actually one cat. I didn't see yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Everybody has cats inside because of rats. In the night, the, cat, the rats come out of those huge. He was 16 years old, he went to the same school like with my, my son, okay? Paz, freedom, or the freedom, okay? We write this inside and the outside. But when the media, when the media shows this, they say in TV that we are asking for peace because of the dealers. We are asking for peace because of the dealers that come in the inside. Yeah. But they think uh, because of the police, they come inside. We ask peace because the police is our problem. Okay. But the media make a big confusion. Okay. They say in the media that we ask peace because the dealers are our problem. Okay. But the dealers have never been our problem. Okay. You know? Yeah. You know? So when you write peace, the media takes advantage on this. Yeah. Peace. Okay. And freedom. I have to say on um, the camera. Um, once I saw the dealers with extremely heavy weapons, I mean, yeah. they had even like automatic shotguns, they had assault rifles. I didn't feel scared of them because they, they seemed pretty, how can I say, it's friendly in a way. They, they seemed friendly, they were yeah, smiling. They, they, they want to show up yeah. power and this is it, impress the girls and see that they are the one. Yeah. But you know, Timo, Finland, they are not exactly the one. They are the only victims, you know. Yeah. I'm not saying they are right or they are wrong. I cannot judge. This is my community. Yes. I can't say they are wrong because I'm gonna feel better than they. But I live in the same community, in the same situation. You no, know? yes. for me, they are friends. I know they are brother, sister, mother. You no, know? they took the decision because of Messias. You know, yeah. I still have a job. Many people here have a job. The majority, but most of them have no chance. Yeah. So they are exactly the same people before being dealers. You know, yes. friendly because they are part of the community. Yeah. You know, but no matter how many weapons you saw, how impressed you were, you know. Nobody shows to be so harmful for you. Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, we can see they are there, but they are afraid of the cop. Yeah. How can guys with armor to teeth yeah. be afraid of the cops? Yeah. Because they never use it against the system. Yes. Because we're the weakest part of the system. Yeah. And they know they are in the end of the line. Yeah. So make their money, keep silent, and the city uh, and the system do their job. Yes. So that's why fireworks. They concentrate in another area. After the police goes, they come back to places. Okay. And everything is back to normal. This is my Brazil. This is the other Brazil, Timo, that many people don't have the chance to see. And I'm very grateful. That's what I've been doing for 26 years, you know. But every tour that I make is completely different. And I can tell that the one today with you, Timo, was also different. Just like the other ones. But it was a special day. It was a special tour. I'm not, it's not only a tour for me, you know. You give me the chance to speak for 2.5 million of voices, silent voices, by the way. Thank you, Jimmy, for making me feel these people's voice. Thank you. you know, sure. and uh, I hope you enjoy that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That's all that I could give you. So later today, Carlos invited us to his apartment, to his home, which he has built entirely, entirely from material that he found from trash, basically a recycling material, and everything he has here is basically free he hasn't bought anything and it's amazing to see for a Finnish guy something like this because in Finland we don't really recycle or use the recycling material these ways so it's amazing home but also on our artwork I'd say so uh, yeah oh crazy house <laughs> Finland <laughs> this is it Finland <laughs> yeah. hey lady how are you superhero superhero girl
I don't understand the hierarchy of a family, a brother, a sister, a mother, a father. You know, I don't understand how a family works. It's one of my curiosity. But that's because when I was eight years old, I had already lost my parents and I was living in a house. I was living in a house. Listen, I was living in a house that I could never, ever, never, ever have a toy. And the house.